All right, question T1.11. You're interested in how many contacts older adults have in their smartphones. Here are data on the number of contacts for a random sample of 30 elderly adults with smartphones in a large city. Okay. Uh, part A, construct a histogram of these data. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use technology to create the histogram. Um, I've already entered in the data into uh, Staplet, so I'm just gonna begin analysis. It gives me a dot plot uh, by default. Okay, let me just make sure there's no typos. I don't think so. All right, so let's switch it over to histogram. Okay, and so here's what it's created. Um, so on the horizontal axis, we've got contacts and it's binning them by every 20. Uh, remember that if, if there was a 20, here, let's capture this. Um, if there was a 20 in the data set, it would always get pushed to the, to the writer bin, not to the left bin. So uh, if there was a 20, it'd go in the second bin. It would not count in the first bin. Um, if there was an 80, 80s would go in the fifth bin, not the fourth bin. Uh, all right, so... Uh, actually, let's just go from here. Uh, and then so the vertical axis has the frequency. Um, so basically, there's only one adult who has less than 20 contacts in their phone, uh, elderly adult. Uh, it looks like there's 10 elderly adults that have between 40 and 60 uh, contacts. Um, and then there's one person that has between 140 and 160 contacts in their phone. Okay, uh, part B. Are there any outliers? Justify your answer. So for this, we're gonna use the one and a half IQR rule, okay? So a low outlier is anything that's uh, smaller, let's get this here, uh, would be anything that is less than Q1 minus one and a half times the IQR. So that's basically the cutoff for low outliers. And then High outliers are anything that are greater than Q3 plus one and a half times the IQR. So that's what I wanted to do there. Low is gonna be less than that. High is gonna be greater than that. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna look over here in the summary statistics. So uh, let's do 30, <laughs> goodness. This video is going to be a hot mess. Okay, 30 <laughs> minus one and a half times. Okay, the IQR. So Q1 is 30, Q3 is 77. The difference between the quartiles is 47. Okay. All right, I'll calculate that in a minute. Let me just try to record things without it scrolling. Okay, Q3 was 77 plus one and a half times 47. Okay, uh, let's try this. Let's um, do that. And we need a calculator. Maybe putting it on the right side will make it easier. Okay, so 30 minus 1.5 times 47. Okay, so low outliers would be anything less than negative 40.5. Um, that's not even possible. You can't have a negative value for this variable. So no low outliers. Okay, high outliers are gonna be anything that's greater than, what is this, 77 plus 1.5 times 47, uh, 147.5. Okay, so it looks like we do have at least one value that exceeds uh, that limit, okay, and that boundary. All right, so for part B, based on these calculations, we could say uh, the elderly person that has 151 contacts is a high outlier. Okay, 
they have an unusually high number of contacts compared to the other people in this sample. Okay, part C, would it be better to use the mean in SD or the median in IQR to describe the center and variability of this distribution? Okay. Well, we know that there is a high outlier that's present. Okay, So that's already going to rule out using the mean and the standard deviation because those things are easily changed by outliers. Okay? A high value, for instance, is going to inflate the mean um, and then it will also inflate the standard deviation. Okay? So the best thing to do here is uh, because of the outlier, we'll use the median and IQR because those two measures are resistant to outliers. Okay. Meaning they're not going to easily change just because there's one or two outliers in the data set. 